literally. NASA is saying there's an asteroid heading toward Earth that's the size of a tall building. The good news is that when it hits the Earth's atmosphere, it's going to likely explode and break up into like a million pieces, they say. Uh, the bad news is that explosion in and of itself is going to cause damage all over the place and that some of the debris could still fall back to Earth and do some damage. This thing's called the DA-4. And it's traveling at more than 20,000 miles per hour. Who knew? Joining us now is somebody who did know. He's a geologist and a theorist. His name is Randall Carlston. Uh, he's good enough to join us uh, once again. Uh, what is this thing? Tell us about it. Well, we're safe now. It passed us yesterday morning at, at about 9 o'clock. Yes. So we're out of the danger zone. We can uh, breathe a sigh of relief. That object uh, followed right on the tails of another one that was uh, the day before, on March 2nd, which was uh, 2020 DZ-3. Both of these two objects were roughly the same size as the object that exploded over Siberia in 1908, right. the so-called Tunguska object. Now, these objects are not going to cause planetary devastation. They're on the scale that you could call a, a city killer. Um, you're in Washington, D.C. now. Um, Washington, D.C. has a, the, the perimeter interstate is uh, 495, I believe. Right. The area inside that, or, or in Atlanta here where I'm at, it's, uh, it's uh, 285. Right. The area inside there is about 800 square miles in both cases. That is the area of devastation of the 1908 wow. uh, explosion over Siberia. So this is about equivalent to a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb explosion. So in Siberia, you had over 800 square miles of old growth, Taiga forest, 80 million trees literally just snapped off at, at the ground level, laid over like new mown hay. And if an object like that exploded over a major city on Earth, you would have millions of casualties and it would be complete chaos, but it would not cause planetary disruption. It would so, be, like I said, it's, it's a city killer. Can you explain to me, I, so when I describe that it would not hit Earth, it explodes just before it gets to Earth, is it the particles that fall that hurt us or just the explosion itself that would affect it's us? The it's the explosion itself, because that thing, when you're, you think of something moving at 20 or 30,000 miles per hour, yeah. miles per hour, that's, you know, say 20 miles per second, and the atmosphere is about eight miles thick. So it's moving so fast, the atmosphere doesn't really even have a chance to get out of the way. So it's, it's almost like this object smashing into a brick wall, and it's decelerated so fast that it just dumps its energy into the atmosphere. and. We'll have, you know, in, in the case of the Tunguska event, the radius of destruction wow. was between 20 and 30 miles is it from just a, the is epicenter it, of the blast. Is it, you, you said that this one has just missed us, but there was another one in front of it. So I guess, are there others behind it? Uh, is it just a matter of time before one of these things actually does this? Oh, of, yeah, it is a matter of time. And, and here, here's the critical question. Since we've been really uh, a space-based civilization in the last 30 to 40 years, and we've started tracking these things, we've seen an increase in the number of documented near misses. The crucial question to me is this. Is, are we looking at a steady state situation, and it's just that our improved technology is uh, allowing us to see more of these things, or is the flux of these extraterrestrial objects actually increasing? We don't know, but I would like to think that it's a steady state, we're just seeing more of them, that they've always been out there, but there's the possibility that the flux of these things does uh, fluctuate through time. And from the geological level now, we're discovering that the Earth is filled with scars wow. and uh, astrobleams from past impacts. We're, we're and the thing about the Tunguska, I'll say this real quick, the thing yeah. about the Tunguska event is did not hit the ground, therefore did not leave a crater. It exploded in the atmosphere. So in another thousand years, there won't really even be any evidence that ha that happened. It's likely that the number of Tunguska type encounters is maybe 10 times greater than the encounters that actually leave an impact crater in the Earth itself. Final question. What are governments, yeah. ours or others, doing to uh, deal with this eventuality? And you're down to 45 seconds. Not enough. That's why I'm interested to see how uh, Space Force evolves. 
If people do want to learn more about this, just check out randallcarlson.net and they'll be able to dive into a lot more detailed information about this subject. But they are doing something about it, but they're just not doing enough. Our government in particular is dealing with it. Is there an agency that's setting this up? Uh, well, yeah, NASA is looking at this. I mean, this is where we get this information from, NASA. Okay. And certainly, I know that the, the uh, head of NASA now is actually quite concerned about this as a, as a, 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 a matter of in our future. R yes. R Randall Carson, uh, you are a great guest, sir. Uh, I call you Grizzly Adams. Oh. You go by Randall Carson. Either way, we love having you on. Thanks again, my friend. <laughs> I love being here, Rick. I appreciate it. We love having you. Thanks so much.